In this video, we're going to focus on how we can add these multiple charts nicely side by side, but also make them in a proper shape, as you can see here with the nice squares. So making them all matching and aligning them all together. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to focus on how to place multiple charts side by side in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need to do here is we go to chartjs3.com getting started and this link you can also find in the description box. Let's scroll down here and just copy this chunk of code here. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video that explains the JavaScript of the code. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just paste this all in here and then I'm going to cut this out, put it in there, save this and there we are. So now we have a nice bar chart. So what I want to do now is I want to add up three different chart types here. And what would be very nice is to let's uh, copy all of this here. I'm going to copy all of that. And then one will be a bar. The other one will be a line chart. And one will eventually be a pie chart. And I'm selecting that one on purpose because that has a different shape. So this will be our, or well, let's call it donut chart. I love donut charts. More than pie charts, they look far more appealing. So this is a donut chart and then here this will be our line chart. So for the line chart what we need to do here, well, I'll just say here this will be a line, line and then I'll just select a specific color, single color that we want to show. Once we did this we have to do some adjustments here. Uh, let's see here that's the line, alright so the configuration should be a line. And this is very important because we have multiple data here. And this here, what I'm using here is what we call a shorthand. So this is an ES6 shorthand, which means the following. This is a uh, head, sorry. So what that means is the following. If the data, which is an object here, is equal to the constant of data, in that case, we can use a shorthand or a shortcut of writing. If that's not the case, because basically, officially, it's just like this. This is the complete way but if you want to make it shorter you're more uh, concise you can just do a comma here and that'll be done but of course now what happened we already have a constant of data at the very top here so what I will say here this will be now our constant of data line so this means we have now not anymore a shorthand so we are not allowed to use a shorthand here if you do use the shorthand you will get an error so that's why make sure you do this and follow this along so once we have that we have this one here, we have the configuration here, my chart here, it's also not allowed anymore. Let's give this a my chart line because it's another constant. And here this canvas, I'll just say here line. And what I'm going to do here once we have this, the configuration. This is the only exception here, the configuration. Uh, for that one, for some reason, we must use a shorthand. If you would do this and then config line, it will give an error. And that's the only exception here. So why that is, I don't know. I guess there must be something built in into Chart.js itself. Or maybe I'm just missing something. Anyway, doesn't matter so much. We have that now. The next one here is our donut chart. And here, same story. This is our donut chart. Data, let's say donut. Let's copy that. Then we say here, our data, colon, donut. Then we have here the config. And this config will be donut. And uh, remember, in a donut chart, we don't have scales. So I'm going to remove the scales here. And then here have the my chart. Let's say my chart donut. And then this will be my chart donut. And this will be config donut. I guess very straightforward. Everything donut here. This one has all lines. Uh, sorry, that's this one here. This is all the lines. And finally, here we have all the basic one. Just the default. I will not touch that one. So if I save this now, we're not done. Because what we need to do here is we're going to just duplicate this here. So the question was, how do we get them side by side? Well, I'm going to show you here. If I say here, this will be this. That will be my chart. This will be line. And this one is here, donut. By default, it is already set here side by side because of the CSS. So if I refresh it, there we are. But you might see this. Say, oh my goodness, this is horrible. How do we solve this? All right, so don't worry. We're going to work on that. Um, let's say here is our chart box. First of all, you can see if we have all of these items and our width here probably is very limited. I'm not sure how big our width is. You can see here our width should be about 800. You can see here the width is 863 pixels. Without the console log, we probably have about 300 pixels. So let's say here the width for every chart box should be, let's say 250. 250 pixels. Save that. Refresh. 
All right, so now we get this here, but this one is not consistent with this, so we have to solve that later on. So let me first explain why are we able to put them nicely together here. So to understand this, you must understand this is basically a CSS topic, not really a chart.js topic, but I will include some chart.js topic in here. Uh, in our chart box here, oh, sorry, that's this one here. This is this is the magic display flex box. So a flex box basically allows us to put them all together in one line. How? We have the align item center. We can do this in the beginning, left, right, start, or, or end, one of these terms. And here we have the justified content in center as well. So basically what is now, what, what I did here exactly was I want to put it in the center and the center. So basically center of the center of this entire item here because the full div, if I'm not mistaken, should be the chart card. That is correct. So the chart card is the full div. And then within the chart card, you can see this, we have these divs here, which is called the chart box. So the chart box, and you can see the position of the chart box, is in the center. And officially, they are in the center, horizontally and vertically, as you can see here. And especially, you will notice that here, they will be nicely centered. All right, so now we have this, and you understand this one. This is just a CSS topic, and if you really want more CSS, let me know. Maybe I'll make some more CSS topics regarding to this. So let's start to solve this hideous issue here. Because we are not able, well, we can convert this into a different shape, but that's not good. What is probably more, more practical would be to make them square, but make these others square as well. So let's scroll down here, and then what I'm going to do in here, in the options, you're going to say here, um, aspect ratio, sorry, make sure that's a small, Item. So aspect ratio, by default, is always, the maintain aspect ratio is always true. But the default of maintain aspect, for the aspect ratio, which is basically the ratio between the width and the height, is for a bar and line and a scatter chart, it is always this shape, basically 2 to 1. Meaning the width is 2 and this is 1. For a, a radar chart, pie chart, a donut chart, it is like a square. So that is basically, this is 2 to 1, and this one is 1 to 1. So we want to force now everything 1 to 1. So you're just going to do this. And by default, it is if you convert it basically into a mobile shape. But now what we're going to do is just going to force them all nicely in a square. So we go back here as well, in the options, you put that in there. And then for the donut chart, it's not really necessary to indicate, because by default, it is already set. So if I refresh, there we are, and now we have this, and to be honest, they all look very decent and very appealing here if they are a square. And that's basically here what we did. And this is how you put them aligned together. So, and if you enjoyed this video, maybe you want to make them far more dynamic. For example, you want, when you click on one, it will show and affect the other items as well. So I have a special video for that, where you make basically a, click, a clickable stack bar chart that updates another chart. This is a very interesting topic because this is very suitable for a dashboard with multiple charges or charts on one page.